Okay, this is going to be data recovery case 407572. It is a one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. And I know we've got at least one other video on a one terabyte Western Digital drive, but um, it's not necessarily that these are you know, the worst drives that are out there. Um, this case here um, is just one of those weird ones that we thought would be a good one to highlight in a video. And when I say it's a weird case, I mean the damage to this drive is pretty extensive. You can see down here the part of the label is missing. I've already opened it. Um, from what I gathered from the customer, um, this drive was part of a uh, some sort of dispute. I'm not sure how it got involved. Um, they were in a hotel and the person that they were arguing with, I guess, grabbed the drive, um, had it in their hand, whatever it was and just chunked it right off the balcony and it landed uh, flat on its side and you can see by the picture I'm showing right now um, the extent of the damage to the heads um, they were just thrashed pretty good so what we're going to try to do is go through and um, highlight this case and we've talked to the customer this may not be recoverable depends on what they try to do with it um, the good thing, um, the, at least the customer said, was that they did not power the drive up uh, any afterwards. I tend to believe that, and I also tend to believe that even if they had, um, the heads were so badly mangled, they would not have swept across onto the platter surface anyway. And there was really no obvious damage to the platter, so I think this is a pretty decent candidate for a, uh, a recovery. But, you know, anything can happen, and we'll just need to see what the situation is. The other important um, component of this drive that seems to be relatively intact is the uh, the motor itself. Um, with At the base of the motor here, uh, within there there's the, the hub and everything that the platters mount to and there's a bearing inside there also and those will tend to get damaged when a drive suffers an impact like a drop and I'm actually fairly stunned that that's not uh, the case here. I fully anticipated that the uh, spindle motor and everything would be completely seized on this, but it's not. So that was another um, lucky break for the customer for sure. So anyway, uh, I wanted to highlight a little bit about how we uh, choose parts drives um, also. Um, I have a drive here that I believe, at least on paper anyway, looks like it'll be a pretty decent match. They are a different model number, but they are the same family. Um, so you see the model here, WD10EADS-65. M2B0, this is WD10EADS-22 uh, M2B0. So that 65 and that 22 are the two variances within the, uh, uh, the model number. Make absolutely no difference as far as parts compatibility are concerned because these are the same family hard drive. Also too, another element we look at are the date of manufacture. Um, we want them to be as close as we can get them anyway. This one here was the 13th of January 2010 and the parts drive was the 28th of January 2010. So about 15 days there. Country of origin is another uh, biggie that we look at. Um, we used to rely a lot on this DCM number. Uh, we try to get as close as we could to the same alphanumerics, at least matching like the 4th, 5th, and 6th I believe is what we typically focused on before. Now we've kind of thrown uh, a lot of that out the window because we've seen drives that are on paper should not be compatible at all um, that still work even if the DCMs are not anywhere near what they should be. Um, in a case like this we may get let's say this was a 758 drive the uh, the customer's drive we may be able to get a one terabyte set of heads to still work in it. Um, you know there's a a number of um, other compatibility um, components that come into play when it comes to swapping out heads. The one thing we are going to focus on right now is a component um, that's called the micro jog value and that is a unique um, factor within each drive. It is basically um, a number that is stored within the ROM um, that tells us uh, what the values 
of each head are uh, as far as how the ROM sees them. If we get values on this drive that are very close to the parts drive, then chances are the heads are going to be compatible. So first thing we're going to do is hook this drive up to PC3000 and get the microjog values. What we are not going to do though is allow this drive to activate the heads. And really I'm just going to do a very simple trick. It's nothing major. There's a couple ways you can do it. Sometimes you can actually remove just the PCB off of these and they will eventually after four or five minutes become ready and you can go through and read the ROM and things like that off of it. That isn't always the case um, on these drives though. And on this particular one we are going to just block this is where the this is actually the base of the uh, the head stack. This is where the the connection is made from the heads to the PCB, and they basically these pins here come in contact with these pads. So we're going to block that, and that will keep those heads that are so badly damaged uh, safely parked out of the way. And all we need to do is just put something there to block that, and then screw the control board back on, at least so that the motor controller is in place and connected, contacted to the to the PCB. So now power will go through; it'll spin up the motor. As far as the controller board is concerned all's good, it's just that the head's not working so it'll error itself out but it'll allow us to still be able to gain access to the ROM. So what I'm going to do is go up to PC3000 and at this point in time I'm going to hit F11 and that will power the drive up and actually what I need to do first is connect everything to the drive obviously. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit F11. And so the drive will start to spin up, but it will not engage the heads. So they won't, the heads won't be sitting there clicking, they won't be trying to read or anything like that. You'll see it stay busy here for a while. And there it becomes ready, and generally the drive will spin back down. So we'll go through here and make sure that it's detecting properly, detected that it was connected. Um, run the utility, we'll detect the family now. And that detected properly, we'll go through and hit start. Now you'll notice up here, it will show the model of the drive, but it won't show the serial, it won't show any of the capacity, you know, no other values. Um, will be displayed because the drive is really not engaged. It's just reading directly off the controller board right now. And we'll go through and view the ROM information. Once we've viewed that, um, this is where we are focusing everything right now. And that is these microjog values. Um, I'm going to go through and write these down. So for head zero, we have head zero, one, two, three. There's four heads in this drive. So head zero is 3470. Head one is 3225. Head two, 3469. And head three, 3242. Now, when it comes to parts compatibility, we want to, the general consensus is anywhere from 150 to 200 points in value is going to be safe and probably compatible. I have found just through my experience that I typically like to have these values within a hundred of each other. So as long as we are on track for not exceeding this value by a hundred then the heads that we are going to be trying to use should be compatible. So now that that's done we'll go through and power this drive off and now we'll go through and dis disconnect it from the system.
I'll put these two screws back in just so we don't lose them. And we will set this drive aside and now we will connect our parts drive. And hopefully this drive is perfectly functional should be. We typically go through and check all these before we put them in our inventory. So now um, I'll go through and power up this parts drive. Now we don't have the read channel obviously blocked on this. This drive is perfectly fine so we can just let it spin up and power up and calibrate as it normally would. Okay, it's become ready. So we'll detect that run the utility, auto detect the family, you can see that it is the same family as the um, customer's drive, Dragonfly 2, utility start, everything looks pretty much the same at startup as the uh, customer's drive did except on this one obviously you can see the capacity and serial number. We'll work with the ROM, view the ROM information, and here we go with the numbers. So on this one here, 3406 for head 0, 3288 for head 1, 3403 for head 2, 3228 for head 3. Now we have uh, the values logged away from the uh, customer's drive. On head 0, the customer's drive is 3470. This is 3406. That's perfect. Uh, 3225 for head 1, 3288 here. It's perfect. Um, head 2, 3469, we're 3403 here. Uh, this is probably the best uh, compatibility I've actually seen in a while. Head 3, we have 3242, and here we have 3228. There is absolutely, positively no reason why these heads should not work in that drive. So that eliminates a lot of the guesswork. That's the problem with not having the right equipment for doing this, for one thing. Um, you could buy 10 different parts drives and they all maybe on paper look like they should work um, but when you go to swap the heads out you still have issues where they aren't compatible, the drive's still clicking, you may think it's an issue where the platter's damaged and it's not and it could be just parts compatibility issues. This microjog value though is a pretty big one that at least we rely on for indicating whether the parts are going to be acceptable or not uh, by the customer's drive. So we will move on to the next phase of putting those hits in and seeing what we can get off of it.
Okay, moving on now with uh, case 407572. Um, everything during the uh, repair part of the process uh, seemed to go fairly well. Um, no issues, um, no obvious damage to the platters. So we're going to go ahead and connect this uh, to our PC3000. A lot of videos you'll see that we typically use our DeepSpar Imager and I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I use mostly that. Um, sometimes I'll use PC3000. Uh, it just depends on, you know, that's just my preference. Um, some of the other technicians here actually will use, uh, you know, just the DDI machine all the time. Um, Right now with this one, since we kind of know the customer really is only focused on um, a couple folders, I believe they had uh, QuickBooks or Quicken Data, one of the two, QuickBooks or Quicken, they said there's a folder on there for it. Um, and then also to uh, their pictures, uh, there's one on there that I guess has older family pictures and stuff, so those are the primary concerns. So right now I'm going to go ahead and move on up and I'm going to power on the drive and cross our fingers that this works. It's busy right now. I hear it trying to calibrate. Okay, well it's ready. That's what the, the green lights there indicate. And we'll see what we have. I can already see that it's detecting the serial number and the capacity, so that's another good thing. Up here, everything is detecting properly. Drives will tend to be a little degraded in their performance when you've gone through and made a repair to them, you know, with a non native set of heads inside of them. Um, still trying to read some of the service area data. Usually they're quicker than this. Actually, that turned out fairly well. I'm going to go right into Data Extractor and um, see if we can see our customer's data. What I've done is just created a new task within Data Extractor. Okay, now we have this open. I'm going to go ahead and build a head map first. Usually the first thing we go through and do, that way if we have a problem with one of the heads reading, we can go through and deactivate that particular head if we need to. I may fast forward a little bit here until we get to the end of this uh, this process of building out this head map. Okay, our head map is finished. Now we will start to explore the file system. up this is kind of a map layout of the uh, of the sectors let me go through and just scan the MFT well wow, that's looking really good um, what this is essentially doing is building uh, what we do I mean, kind of like what we do in um, our deep spar imager we're scanning out the uh, the bitmap the sectors that actually contain the data and this gives us the file structure so you can see here these are the folders there's the QuickBooks folder so we know the customer needs that and old pictures there's that and the newer family pictures I knew there was another one on there that was I knew there was two different family pictures directories and that looks like it has a lot in it a lot of different folders at least so go through 
copy that. Now these are the main things the customer needs. Um, they said emphatically uh, these three folders are what they need that were the most important. So what we're going to do is actually go through and save those first. And we already have it selected there to that directory. Okay, so what we are doing now is basically going through and saving all of the files that we've just checked off, all these directories and the files that are contained within those directories. Once that's done, we'll then go back and image or copy everything else off the drive. Um, it's one of those things that makes it a lot easier for us to just focus on the files that are the most critical first. And within PC3000, we're not really putting the drive under a tremendous load to try to reread areas that it's having problems with. We have a lot of default parameters set um, within PC3000 to handle read errors and things like that. So I would say at this point in time this is looking really really good. Uh, if something changes um, we'll obviously come back and update this video at the end. <coughs> Excuse me, but for now seeing the way this drive is scanning through here um, these sectors this is looking flawless. So I'm really happy with this. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-717-8974. For more information about our data recovery services, you can visit our website at acsdata.com. Uh, we'll be happy to help you with any questions you might have, um, any type of recovery, whether it's hard drives or complex RAID arrays, doesn't matter. Uh, we, can, we can definitely help you. Uh, we charge no evaluation fees, and in most cases we charge no attempt fees either if the data is not recoverable for some reason. Um, so again, if you have any questions, visit us at acsdata.com or give us a call 1-800-717-8974. Thanks for watching.